Well, 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 would you look who it is? Little Armor Stacker Brush. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we will be showing off my Armor Stacker Champion build that I've been making for the past uh, couple of weeks. Um, I want to give some back info on this character before we start heading into the gear and the reasoning behind why I got certain things and why I didn't get certain things. Um, I always wanted to make some form of like an aura stacker and uh, in the past they've been way too expensive and haven't really been that interesting but since the meta has kind of shifted away from doing aura stackers I've seen that a lot of people are doing armor stackers and I found the concept pretty interesting so a little bit of a deeper look into it and it's pretty standard stuff where you basically just get like uh, iron reflexes and then you push your evasion and armor as much as you can then you play with the replica dream feather that gives you attack damage per 450 armor and you try to get hundreds and thousands of armor um so i wanted to make my own character but most people who play armor stalkers obviously have a mage blood belt because you can get ridiculous amounts of uh, armor and evasion on your flasks now mage blood is a little bit too expensive for me i could farm one but i don't really feel like i want to so i wanted to see what i could do with this on like a semi budget like obviously this is not a budget character i've spent a lot of money on this but i haven't spent as much money as other people usually would do into a build like this so for example instead of having mage blood you know we have a perseverance nothing really special there i probably think you could get another better belt but i really like having the onslaught from this belt because attack speed is quite nice for this build and it scales very well with attack speed for this build um another thing is also is that i'm kind of under leveled i'd rather be level 96 i'm currently level 94. the reason for that is that at level 96 I would have every single skill point that I want in my skill tree. This is how my skill tree looks like and we're going to go over more on that later. But right now I am missing out on having the evasion mastery, increased evasion rating if you've been hit recently. This would give me like 400,000 damage boost as well. And I'm also missing out on R effect, increased effect of non curse R's from your skills. This also would give me like 400,000 uh, DPS. So I'm losing out at around seven to 800,000 DPS because I don't have these two things. So I think my damage is about 6.5 when it's supposed to be like 7.3 if I'm not mistaken. Million DPS that is. So it would be a lot better if I actually had those things. Now another thing as well is that I have been recording this character's footage in the video without having Awakened Multi-Strike. I just purchased it now afterwards because I just got the money for it, but I've already had, I've already filmed all the footage, so I don't feel like filming all the footage again, really. So I was using Multi Strike 2020 before, and now I have an Awakened Multi Strike level one. As you can see, I basically have no experience on it. Um, so Awakened Multi Strike also gives you quite a big damage boost. So I, I, I think right now with the Awakened Multi Strike, I have like 6.6, .6, and in the video, I have like 5.8 or something million DPS whatever that is uh, and and yeah like i said if i had my other levels i have i would have like 7.3 7.4 something like that i can't remember the actual numbers but yeah awakened multi strike is kind of big for dps in this build but as you could see as well i managed to do pretty well without it so yeah basically the character stacks armor into damage and you also play with Doriana's prototype because that's just such an easy access to damage and armor also applies to lightning damage taken from hits which is very nice because we have a lot of armor and when you have like negative uh, lightning resistance then that means that like you still basically take no damage from lightning because of this armor except for lightning damage over time like mana siphoner uh, uh, arch nemesis monsters and some other things can be really freaky you literally just instantly die but unless it's any form of mana dot you're basically unkillable with this character i haven't died yet playing this character as you can see in the footage as well i can do all released uh, maven uh, invitations and just stand in the middle and just get hit by everything now i haven't tried out the feared because i don't think i would be able to do the feared the damage is the damage is decent i would like to push it more i can min max a lot more i can get my levels you know i could get level 5 multi-strike i only have level 17 phantasmal smite as well obviously i'm losing a lot of damage not having this level 20 this is like a couple of million dps as well like a mil dps maybe 
Um, and then there's other things like anomalous things like um, uh, anomalous or whatever it is, defines banner. And you have, you know, your wrath and your determination. And uh, where's the other one as well? Should be here. Defines banner, shit like that. Like you can you can squeeze a lot more damage if you get like anomalous gems and all that stuff. But they're like two, three divines each, and and I don't really feel like I want to min max this character too much more anyway. Right now, I, I think I can do everything that I want to do. I haven't tried the feared. Maybe I could do it. I don't know. But yeah, it is what it is. So uh, yeah. Uh, also, the reason why I went champion is because I'm not a fan of the ascendant build. I think ascendant is weird and annoying, and I don't really like it. But I do believe Ascendant is a much better character for this build. I've seen a lot of people play Ascendant and the reason why they do that is because they have easy access to Rage. Rage on hit by playing the Berserker Ascendancy and the Champion Ascendancy in Ascendant. You also save some skill points by traveling around the skill tree by playing Ascendant. And when you have that easy access to Rage on hit, you can then play with Berserk, and Berserk is such a big damage boost. Like, you can just pop everything when you're killing bosses or whatever, pop everything, pop Berserk, and you could just absolutely go to town. That's something that I'm missing out on. The only uh, defensive things or, like, offensive things that I have is Grace, and when I get Vol Haste, I can pop Vol Haste and do some more damage, but except for that, it's kind of weird. Now, another thing I want to go over really quickly is the flasks. So, I'm using a very specific flask setup in order to gain charges when I'm hit by an enemy. And this makes it so we can have flask uptime almost all the time, as long as you're just getting slammed dying by enemies. Which is not a problem because we regen so much on this character, we basically can't die, even though we have a low ES pool, we have so much armor, and we have so much ES regen that we just constantly gain maxius and we basically can't die not to one shots i haven't died yet at least like i said maybe i would die in the fear but everything else i've not really died from so the flask setup that i have is armor evasion flasks and also reduced mana cost of skills in order to actually being able to use grace and we'll talk about that later but i also have things like attack speed and also reduced effect of chill um and freeze now i have antifreeze here by playing solo the brand king i basically do that on every single character because i just cannot fucking bother with freeze so i love that uh i love that pantheon but this gives us reduced effect of chill because chill can just be really really annoying so as you can see here i gain charges when i'm hit by an enemy and basically i can just pop all my flasks and i can just stand in the middle just get slam dunked all the time bam 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 and my flask will just go up all the time and you can see that in the footage as well when i'm killing these bosses so i have here jade flask because of the evasion rating and increased evasion rating during flask effects and then i also have basalt flask for 20 percent more armor and then i have the reduced effects and then i have granite flask for the armor and then i have the reduced effects and then I have Stib Knight Flask for the 20% more evasion. And then I have reduced mana cost of skills during flask effects. So my uh, smite basically doesn't cost anything. And then I have Sulfur Flask for a little bit increased damage. And 10% uh, and, uh, attack speed during flask effect as well. And obviously the gain charges. So when I pop all these flasks, I gain a lot of evasion. As you can see here, my uh, armor right now is 70,000. So I gain a lot of armor and evasion. Boom, it goes to 120. So that's one way to like gain a lot of evasion and armor and basically evasion is armor because of iron reflexes and therefore a lot of damage. And then I just stand and get pounded and I just get my flash charges up and I can use all of them again. Another really important thing is that we're using March of the Legion boots. What these boots do is that they give you an aura that you can use as an offensive or defensive cooldown. You can, you can activate it and you have it for a while. So I have level 28 Grace in here. I have level 21 Grace, but we have a plus 5 level of socketed aura gems in here. And I also have Empower Support, so I get my Grace aura uh, up as much as possible. It would be better to have level 4 or level 5 Empower here to get even more evasion, therefore more armor into this build. But like I said, I didn't really want to min-max that hard. I also have Anomalous Increased Duration Support because this makes it so the mana cost is reduced. And I also have Divergent Inspiration but this, because this once again makes it so the mana cost is reduced. Because one problem of playing March of the Legion boots and having an aura like this is that 
The mana cost is insane. Let's remove these gems. The mana cost is 841 mana. I have 64 mana on my character. There's no way I will actually be able to activate this Grace Aura unless I lower the mana cost of it. And that's where this flask also comes in very handy. Right now it costs 233 mana, but when I activate this flask in particular, it's gonna cost nothing. If I take out the Divergent, it costs 446. If I take out this one, it costs 127. But with all of them together, it costs nothing. So by doing this, I can activate my flasks and I can pop Grace, and as you can see, 422,000 armor with my flasks up and with Grace up. That is a lot of armor for our replica Dream Feather. So this is basically how you play the character. You pop your flasks, you pop your Grace, you use Molten Shell, and then you have a lot of armor, and when you get hit and stuff like that, you're gonna gain more and all that shit, like it's, it's very simple. And the more armor you get on the character, the more damage you can do. Which is why you want to have like different versions of Defiance Banner and Determination. And uh, you want to have like Empower Level 4 in here to make your Grace as big as possible. And you just want to get as much armor on your character as possible from anywhere that you can. If you look at my cluster jewels, I have stuff like 26 armor and 2 plus attributes. Uh, on this one, uh, 17 armor and some fires because I needed that. Like anywhere I could get a little bit of armor, I would just get it because it's damage. Now, obviously, the more money you have, the better cluster jewels you can get and the better everything you can get. So, yeah, obviously, everything comes at a price. And another thing is, as well, is that we are playing Doriani's prototype, which makes it so nearby enemies have a lightning resistance equal to yours. So, what you do with this is that you try to get your lightning resistance as low as possible. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, why don't you have minus 200%? You can get that so easily this league. Well, I like to make builds and characters and videos that are applicable to other leagues. If we don't get the minus lightning resistant rings and, and uh, amulets from this league into next league, because uh, you never know if Kalandra is going to go core and how accessible those things are going to be, then I want to make a character that you can play without having all that funky shit. Now, obviously, it would be so much better if you could get a ring that has lowered lightning rest so we can hit 200%, which is the max you can hit, because that would give us so much more damage. But I don't want to do that. I want to play without having those weird rings unless we never see them again. We don't really know right now. So I'm able to hit 134% minus. I don't have lightning rest on any gear except for like much of the Legion. And it would be better if I could get 12% uh, to all elemental resist on these instead. Like as low as possible is better because you're gaining as little lightning rest as possible. Another thing as well is that I had Thread of Hope Jewels. Now this only gives minus 12, it would be much better if this gave minus 19 or minus 20. Uh, and this one is minus 18, that's, de that's decent, but like minus 19 or minus 20 would be better. Obviously I would go below my fire rest cap, but I could just increase my fire rest by like giving quality to this ring and then I would actually hit it. And doing these things would give me tremendous amount of damage as well. Like I said, there are a lot of things I can still min max out of this build to get more damage. So if I did all of those things, I would get lower lightning rest and I would just deal a lot more damage and I could get all my armor up more if I had more money and just a couple more levels and I could deal like almost one third more damage than what I'm dealing right now. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into the actual gear. We have Replica Dream Feather, obviously because of the attack damage per 450 armor. We have Shaper's Touch uh, Crusader Gloves with plus two level of socketed aura gems. And then I have level 21 gems in my sockets as well. Now, uh, this is a aura stacker character as well. So you want to have very juiced up auras. That's why I went with level 21 auras. And I also have these Shaper Touch Gloves. Also, this gives some nice evasion, energy shield, melee physical damage and all that stuff. Like it's pretty good gloves to use overall. The belt, as I said, I use this for the Onslaught while fortified, and since I'm playing the champion version, I'm fortified all the time. Um, I like this belt uh, quite a bit, it's pretty nice for that, but there's probably a better belt that you could get. I didn't really research much into the belt because I tried out different versions and then I got tired of the other ones that I tried. I tried some ones where you can gain, where you actually can gain rage, and then since I was gaining rage, I could, you know, use Berserk, but it was very clunky because there are ways that you can do that, but 
I've done it in the past, but I didn't really like it in this character. And then I have more to the Legion. I have 1 to 160 lightning damage if you haven't killed recently. I think the damage, uh, the elemental damage penetration is probably better, but I went with this because it's fine and I didn't really want to run lab myself. And then I have rings with uh, ES and resists because I need a lot of resists, you know, to make up for all the load resists that we have. Uh, same with this one, non channeling skills have minus 7 total mana cost as well, so I didn't have to like spend a lot of mana on using smites, it costs nothing when I activate my flasks. I can just wham away, uh, even though I have like almost no mana. And then we have Eternal Struggle Onyx Amulets. And the reason why you have this is because it can give you one very, very good thing. While unique enemies in your presence, 24% increased effect of non curse Rs from your skills. You can get this without the unique enemy in your presence. The, the number is just going to be lowered. But I only use this character for bossing, so I didn't really care. I, I, I was like, I might as well go with this. And also get some nice ES. You get a lot of stats from this build, which you very much need in order to like equip all your gear and your gems. And then the last two uh, meaning uh, sentences here. Critical strikes inflict malignant madness if each of worlds is dominant or kill enemies that have 15% or lower life on hit if this searing Exarch is dominant. So basically, either you put a debuff on the enemy that reduces their damage and action speed, or you get 15% culling. As you can see here, my searing Exarch implicit modifier is exceptional, so that one is the dominant one. And therefore, I have 15% culling on this build, which is very good since it's basically a bossing build. I also allocated Charisma, this one here, because it's an aura stacker build, so I need as much mana reservation efficiency as possible. But also, increased effect of non curse Rs from your skills is basically Wrath, Determination, Discipline, Pure Device, all these things that are not curses but are still Rs, apply from increased effect of non curse Rs from your skills. And what's that? It's my armor, it's my evasion, it's everything that I have, everything that I put into damage. So this, like having this is very, very good and that's why you try to get this everywhere and which is why having this, for example, would give me a huge damage boost. And then on the helmet, I have mana reservation efficiency of skills, increased air of effect. I have more um, resists, mana reservation efficiency of skills as well, crafted on the uh, helmet and then I have plus one level of uh, socket the AOE gems because I have Haste and Molten Shell and Defiance Banner and stuff like that in here. And then the Smite has 30% increased R effect. When you have Phantasmal Smite and you hit the ground like this, you gain like an aura where you hit uh, and uh, that aura gives you attack speed. And this just gives me even more attack speed. So having this paired with Phantasmal Smite is really good because you want to have a lot of attack speed on this character because it's a really big damage boost. And then I have the Aegis Aurora Champion Kite Shield, obviously. Recover energy shield equal to 2% of armor when you block. So if I block a lot and I have 500,000 armor and I recover 2% equal to my armor when I block and I have 500,000 armor, I recover a lot of energy shield. So this uh, shield is absolutely broken for builds that have tremendous high amount of armor and uh, when you just block all the time, it's absolutely broken. This build can turn so many, or this shield can turn so many builds into immortal builds, basically, in most case scenarios. And it's absolutely insane because we have uh, glancing blows, we have a decent amount of uh, block. We can actually check how much block we have uh, 72 and 56. So we have a lot of block and we just block all the time and we just gain ES all the time. And we also play with Divine Shield. Cannot recover an energy shield to above armor. That's fine. 3% of physical damage prevented from hits is recently uh, regenerated as energy shield per second. We have 500,000 armor. We regen like crazy from Divine Shield and we regen like crazy from the Aegis Aurora. And in the skill tree, we have uh, some large cluster jewels, Storm Drinker and Widespread Destruction here. Storm Drinker for lightning damage, leeches, ES, very nice. And also penetrate lightning resistances because that's something we do. We, you know, we play Phantasmal Smite, so we play uh, all of our damage is basically turned into lightning damage. 
And then I have small cluster jewels with intros, uh, introspection, which gives 10% increased effect on you from Aorus. And we talked about this. Aorus is what we really uh, utilize a lot in this build for damage and defenses as well. So it's quite obviously why we have these things. And I also try to get like ES, attributes, all that stuff, armor once again. And on the same side, it's pretty the same there. Fire S, ES, introspection, uh, dexterity fire, ES. And on this side, we also have a large cluster jewel with uh, martial prowess for attack speed and attack damage. And also have produce defense for some more block because obviously we want block quite a bit. Then I have Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh cluster uh, or Cobble Jewels in order to get a Worthy Foe. And we'll go with that a little bit later. As you can see here, we also have our Corrupted Blood Canopy inflicted on you and as much attack speed as I could get without, you know, going too much out of my budget. And then we have Thread of Hope Jewels in order to get Dreamer. Elemental Overload, because we're not a crit build, but we are an Elemental build, so Elemental Overload is very good for us. And then Insightfulness as well. So this is very good because it lowers our resistances, so we can get lowered Lightning Rest, but like I said, it would be better if this was minus 20. And we also save some points while still being able to get Insightfulness, Elemental Overload, and Dreamer. And these things lower the mana cost of skills. Uh, even Insightfulness does that, 10% reduced mana cost of skills while on full energy shield, so we can easier be able to use Grace and, and you know, Smite and all that shit without having to use up all our mana. And then we have another one over here, a large ring. This over here was a very large ring. This one is a large ring, so we can get Glancing Blows, Divine Shield, and also another thing here, if I was level 97 even, I could even get Divine Wrath here, which is quite nice. 5% physical damage, extra lightning damage, and damage penetrate lightning wrists as well. That one is quite nice, but it's not like the best of all of them. Like the other ones are better, but this is quite nice as well. But yeah, this way we can get Glancing Blows and Divine Shield without having to use too much points for getting those things, because they are very, very needed for the build. And then over here, yeah, we have the other Forbidden Flesh, obviously. And also almost forgot, we have Melding of the Flesh which is basically minus four to all maximum elemental resistances. So my maximum elemental resistances are lowered. And this one also gives us minus 78% to all elemental resistances, which is why I needed so much fire and cold rest everywhere to make up for this, uh, for this jewel. But the really good thing about Melding on the Flesh is that it gives us elemental resistances are capped by your highest maximum elemental resistance instead. So I have Purity of Ice. I have a lot of R effect and all that stuff and my Purity of Ice is level 23 because it's level 21 and in a plus two level socketed R gems uh, item. So as you can see here, my Cold Rest is 88%. Instead of 75, it's 88. Even, the, even though this lowers it by four, I still have 88. And that makes it so my fire rest is also 88. So my fire and cold rest is really freaking topped. I take almost no damage from fire and cold rest. And that's very important because we have all this armor to mitigate lightning damage and physical hits. And that's why we also very much need the resistances to mitigate elemental damage as well. And I'm also playing CI, so I don't really have to care at all about Chaos Damage. Now, to quickly go over the gems, I have Leap Slam and Fast Attack Support, and then I have Ancestral Call that I swap out uh, for Ruthless when mapping. Uh, Ancestral Call is just really nice for mapping, and uh, Ruthless is really big for single target damage. In the Helmet, Molten Shell, Haste, uh, Tempest Shield, and Defiance Banner. I don't use the Haste Aura, I only use the Vol Haste portion of the Aura. I have Vol Haste here. In the Armor, Ruthless Support, Awaken Multi Strike, Inspiration, Awaken Elemental Damage, Damage on Full Life, and Phantasmal Smite. Would be better if this was 2020 or 2120, obviously. In the Gloves, Purity of Ice, Discipline, Determination, and Wrath. In the Boots, Anomalous Increased Duration, Grace. Level 21 Grace, Divergent Inspiration, and Empower. Better if this was level 4 or 5. 
And in the shield, I have a Sissel Warchief and Sissel Protector and multiple totems, so I can put up both of them. So I have two Ancestral uh, War Chiefs and one Ancestral Protector that gives me attack damage and attack speed boost when I have both of these guys up. Um, and then they also do some damage themselves. And that's basically the gems, nothing really interesting there. So let's go over to the skill tree. So you've already seen the skill tree quite a bit. It's, uh, well, you know, you have your cluster jewels and you have your iron reflexes, and then we get as much uh, reservation efficiency of skills, effect of non-curse arts from skills as possible a little bit here and there. As I said as well, we're playing champion. We have fortitude, so we always have fortify up and that gives us great defenses. We also have unstoppable heroes, so we cannot be stunned while we're fortified. We don't have to worry about stuns. We have attack speed while fortified, which I said is very good. And even more armor innovation while fortified as well. And then obviously we have inspirational. 30% increased effect of non curse arts from your skills. This is massive. And the banner skills have no uh, reservation. That means we can put even more RS into our build while still having like Defiance banner. Um, and then I have Conquer, 100% chance to taunt on hit, 10% reduced damage taken if you've taunted an enemy recently. So we taunt enemies all the time and we take low, less damage from those enemies that we taunted. So that like having Fortify and having all the armor and having all the, you know, uh, resistances and having stuff like conquer this is what makes this build so tanky and when you pair that with aegis and divine shield you know that's what basically makes this character unkillable because of having all these things but one big problem with this build is that you have no accuracy whatsoever which is why i went ahead and got worthy foe through Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame. Forbidden Foe, enemies taunted by you take 10% increased damage, so we do more damage. And also, enemies taunted by you cannot evade attacks. This makes it so we don't have to care about accuracy whatsoever. So that's why I went with Champion, one of the reasons as well, and why I went with this. Now the good thing about this Forbidden Flesh is that it's very cheap and no one actually cares about it, so it's very, very cheap to get. Um, and yeah, then we path through along here a little bit because we obviously want to go up here and we want to get, you know, one thread of hope here and one thread of hope here. We also want to have chaos ino inoculation and stuff like influence and, and sovereignty. So we path up here, we get leadership, um, we get, you know, jewel sockets wherever we can. And then I also have Herald of Thunder, more lightning damage, penetrate lightning damage. And this Lightning Master here is very important. Lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. This is a tremendous amount of damage. And since we don't really deal critical strikes, then we utilize this a lot and we gain a lot of damage from it. Uh, and like I said, Chaos Inoculation as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, that's it. The, the skill tree isn't really anything that sp spectacular either. You know, it's it's pretty simple what we're getting here and uh, and why we're getting it. So that's basically it for this build. Uh, I'm very sorry to everyone who wanted to see me min-max this character a little bit more. Obviously this has been a weird league and, and a lot of people are still playing this league. I just play a little bit only to make videos, but I don't really feel like playing as much. So I have to grind up all that money to like really min-max this character. But if you go to the path of building, you can see the min-maxed version there and how much damage it would have. And then you can fiddle around with it and kind of see like how much damage I have instead with my character. And remember this, armor stackers are absolutely broken if you get a mage blood and if you min max all this stuff as well. You could see that in my uh, like kill videos there when I do all the invitations, my damage isn't really popping off that hard. Like I said, I have like 5 million DPS in those videos. I think I can reach 7 mil plus with all the like awakened multi strike and my levels and min uh, and like some uh, some of those things. And you can min max even more to like eight nine mil dps if you get all those special gems and if you if you get your lightning resistance lowered with with all these uh, jewels and all that shit but a mage blood is just gonna take that damage and just take it to the moon like you could just get so much more damage and become so much more tanky i'm not really sure if you need more tanky but a mage blood just excels this build a lot so keep that in mind that this is somewhat of a budget version but you can't take this character so much further 
And uh, without further ado, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching the video. It was a very long one, but it happens sometimes. I appreciate you a lot though for being here. You're absolutely amazing. If you stick around for this long, then tell me something weird in the comments. Tell me something really weird, like you eat, uh, you eat um, eggs through your ass or I don't know, like something like that, you know, but yeah. Um, uh, still, thank you very much for watching the video. Have a great one and I'll see you around.